I am with Mr. Eric Lawyer, formerly of the Seattle Fire Department. And um, Eric uh, is instrumental in the formation of Protecting All Protectors, and there's a reason. And there's a reason he's here today, and it's a very important reason, and let's just ask him. Eric, uh, tell us just a little more about yourself and why you're here today uh, with Protecting All Protectors at the National Fire Protection Association Annual Convention, would you? I would. Thank you, Richard. And, and that's a mouthful, the Protecting All Protectors Alliance at the National Fire Protection Association. So we're kind of right at home because the National Fire Protection Association, their mission is to protect firefighters and the public also, and ours is to protect protectors. Specifically here because it's an opportunity for us to come to the association that is about protecting firefighters and help them see they set the national standards or guidelines so this is our best practices and so firefighters around the united states and actually around the world will rely on the 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 print materials and the national standards the codes and standards that are set from this organization and like this one, like this one yes and so the reason we're here is because um national standards on September 11th, there was a third tower, World Trade Center 7, that collapsed, which NIST was the one delegated by the federal government to have the investigation authority. And their findings said it came down from, so if you look at the banner here, you can see that top building. NIST claims that a single point failure in that building brought it down in a controlled demolition style. No, no. Well, NIST says it came down. Oh, in, by fire. Right. You're saying it. Came I'm down saying the, controlled demolition. the look that has to me says controlled demolition. Oh. I haven't met anybody really who can who doesn't know about a fire. How did that come down? Well, it's a controlled demolition. So if you just see those three pictures on the right, it's a controlled demolition. When you find out it was on September 11th, it brings in a lot of other stuff. But my point is that single point of failure we believe cannot happen. The reason why it matters is the Grenfell, you can see the Grenfell Tower now, and having talked to people that were involved in that, there was chaos there because they had diametrically opposed strategies. Some were thinking, we need to pull everyone out before it was at that level even. We need to get everybody out and abandon the building because it's going to collapse. Others were saying, we need to address the fires, protect in place, and get this thing out. So the problem was they had mixed strategies happening at the same time. So there's a lot of confusion in the fire service and myths that a lot of people even thought that was from a diesel tanks that were stored there or other things. So it's misinformation. And that's that's what we're here for is to help raise the awareness for the people who attend the national the NFPA conference that this we need to relook at this. I'm here with Captain Raul Angulo of the uh, who spent 38 years with the Seattle Fire Department. Captain Angulo, you doing well? I'm doing well. This is my first uh, NFPA convention and we've had a really good turnout. Yeah, well, why are you here? Let's just talk about Why it. am I here? Well, I recently uh, had uh, engine company fire ground operations published uh, the fourth edition it's an NFPA publication uh, that is also published in cooperation with Jones and Bartlett publishing yeah That's his book. and uh, so in my research uh, I did a lot more research on high-rise firefighting uh, specifically the case studies because that's what we're gonna learn from and uh, I found that none of the U.S. case studies resulted in total structural failure. In fact, from the cases I could find around the world, including the Grenfell fire in, in London, which was a spectacular fire, uh, the building didn't collapse. One Meridian Plaza did not collapse. First Interstate didn't collapse. MGM Grand Hotel in Las Vegas did not collapse. Cook County Fire Administration in Chicago did not collapse. And so, we're, we're basing our strategy and tactics, uh, best practices, on a reliance on type one building construction. Uh, after the book was published, I was approached by uh, the Alliance, Papa Alliance and Richard, and they asked me about building seven. What about the Solomon Brothers building? And can I address those issues? Well, I was aware that building seven collapsed and I had always just kind of accepted the FDNY narrative behind it, but uh, it wasn't until the book was published that I was presented with the information, primarily uh, calling out Bravo 7, that I, I really had to yield to Richard and Eric's position and saying, is this a normal event? And I would have to say no, that based on, on my experience and what I'm writing in my book, right, in, in the NFPA textbook, that the sequence of collapse 
and attributing it to one structural column can collapse an entire building in free fall. It just, I'm sorry, I don't buy it. From a, a tactical firefighting perspective, you know, this building did not behave the way normal high-rise fires behave. I'm, I'm really here to defend my work and the position as an NFPA publication and an author representing NFPA in engine company fire ground operations. I'm saying the way I presented in our textbook is the way we're supposed to do it.